We're at the Fort Worth, Texas National Drive Electric Week event. We're gonna walk around, see what some of the cool stuff is here and see if there's anybody we can talk to. For the third year, we are showing our car at the National Drive Electric Week uh, car show in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, two years ago it was in Dallas, last year it was just in, in this exact same place, but something different this year is we brought our Model 3. Uh, we've got uh, with our accessories and all of that stuff installed, and we have parked in the red Tesla row next to a Model S Plaid and a Model Y. We've got a lot of space here. Uh, the Teslas across from us are taking up a whole lot of space over there. We've got this Rivian R1T we'll get up close to. Over on this side is where the Fords are representing, a bunch of Mach-E's and F-150 Lightnings, and we'll get up and close and personal with them here in a, f in a few minutes and uh, see what this show has to offer. This looks yeah. lower than the one you have. That's Oh yeah, see, it's still very, yeah, that's a little too tall for me. I would be afraid because that it wouldn't balance if I had it up on two feet. So still a little too tall for me, yeah. So uh, we are walking around, giving some interviews, talking to some of the more interesting booths, and uh, people have some really cool stuff. I'm getting excited talking to people here. Hi there. Howdy. Uh, we're here with Chris, and he is representing the uh, Tesla owners uh, group, mm -hmm. and uh, you want to tell us a little about it? Uh, sure. So we're a local group here in North Texas. Uh, we do a lot of uh, charity events, get-togethers. We love to come out to places like Drive Electric Week, uh, State Fair, other places to talk about electric vehicles. Um, Tesla ownership, uh, really any electric vehicles, uh, answer people's questions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And this is your Cybertruck, right? Yes, this one's my Cybertruck. Okay, now do you have other Teslas or have you had? I have, this is my third Tesla. Okay. Uh, I had a Model S before I got this, yeah. and my wife's got a Model Y nice. uh, in the garage, so I, I will, I would, I will never buy another gas car, I can tell you that. Yeah. I would surprise myself if I bought a non-Tesla. Gotcha. Um, it has been... Uh, the service has been awesome. The technology is awesome. I'm, I'm a cybersecurity guy. I'm a computer geek. Okay. Um, it, they're fun. They're comfortable. They're safe. They're uh, just really great vehicles. Awesome. When, when did you get your very first Tesla? Uh, I bought my Model S in 2018. Okay. Um, I bought it used, and then I put over 100,000 miles on it uh -huh. in five years, six wow. years, before okay. I sold it. Well, you are not messing around, huh? Nope. I, I drive a lot. I've had this for about eight months. Uh -huh. I was one of the first group... Uh, one of the first in the North Texas area to have one, luckily. I don't know how, yeah. but I was. Um, so I've had about eight months. I put 20,000 miles on it. Okay. I've and taken it to Mexico. I've taken it up to northern Michigan, everywhere. Very cool. So if people wanted to, want to join the uh, Tesla Owners Club of North Texas, how would they do that? Uh, they can go to our website, um, ntxteslaowners.com. Uh, or the face, I think I was sorry, yeah, NTX Tesla Owners. And then we've got a Facebook group, NTX Tesla Owners. Okay. Uh, it's public, so anybody can join the group. Uh -huh. And then if they're interested in joining, they can just say, hey, I want to join. Okay. And we'll, we'll put you in touch and, and do that. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chris. Appreciate it. No problem. It. We are here with the uh, expert on solar batteries, uh, battery backups. This is Good Faith Energy booth here at the... Um, the uh, Drive Electric Week. So, uh, what's your name? Sammy. Sammy. Okay. Yeah. So, tell us, uh, tell us what what we need to know about battery backups. If we need to get batteries for our panels. Yeah. So, there's a couple of things to consider when looking at batteries, right? It's uh, like, what do I want to back up in my home, and then ultimately, how long do I want to be able to back those up for? Mm -hmm. And so, it's it's a little bit deeper than just putting in a battery and saying you're good to go. But you kind of want to study a little bit more and kind of. You know, there's some things and questions to ask to help get you to your goal and so a couple of things to consider on that end okay so obviously since the answer to every question is it depends <laughs> is there some sort of a chart or a questionnaire we could fill out that we could get a little bit better idea of what we need yeah so here at good faith energy we have a really in-depth process on how we quote these uh, okay. systems so the first thing we do is we actually come out and take about two to three hundred drone images of the roof oh, wow. to get a really good sense of what the roof line looks like and what the surrounding environment looks like. Yeah. Uh, we also look at the electrical system in the home, uh -huh. the main panel, any potential generators right. and complications and so on, uh -huh. uh, as well as like the space in the attic. Uh -huh. And once we've compiled all that data, uh -huh. we filter it through our engineering team. Uh -huh. Our engineers take a look at it, they uh -huh. put together the assessment, uh -huh. and then we're able to meet and have a little bit more of an educated data 
data driven mm -hmm. conversation from our end because we've seen the site and done our due diligence. That sounds like a really good process. I'm guessing that that is something that is, is a process that you would pay for independent of actually purchasing the system. Is that right? <laughs> actually, no. Really? Uh, so we, we go through that due diligence to make sure that when we set expectations with mm -hmm. our clients, mm -hmm. uh, they're set well. And mm -hmm. so it's actually something that we do and, mm -hmm. and we take on mm -hmm. uh, at no expense to our clients initially wow. so uh -huh. that when we sign up and uh -huh. then move forward again like it's it's something that we're sure is accurate and I can go home and sleep uh -huh. at night and, uh -huh. and know that we've done right by our client base all right cool yeah. that's really good to know is there anything else that you think we should know about your company yeah I think if you take a look at us online you'll really like what you see uh -huh. um, not only do we do solar and batteries but we also do the Tesla solar roof and uh -huh. electric oh, okay. vehicle chargers uh -huh. um, we've been in business since 2014 so coming up a little over 10 years now okay. um, um, I would say reach out if you have any questions and we'll be happy to help. Okay, so we're here with Sonia and she is a Rivian and she's going to tell us about it. Oh, I love this car. I love it. We've um, had it for only a couple of months, but we've traveled um, from Santa Fe to Amarillo, down to El Paso. Um, here in, We live here in Dallas and uh, we just absolutely love this truck. Just love it. So can you t tell me about those vented and heated seats and like the climate Ooh. thing you were telling me before? Yeah, okay, so in Texas, who can't live with, you know, vented seats? And so we use those vented seats, both the driver and passenger side to have those vented seats. And then they have the tri-climate where um, your front passengers can have their own climate setting where the rear passengers have their own, so, which works great if you have kids in the car, which we have grandkids and they, seem to like it warmer what's up with that <laughs> yeah. but yeah that comes in handy that's so cool and you were saying that the front seats are vented and heated and the rear correct. seats are just heated but not correct vented, right? that's correct very cool well and what else about the Rivian is is your favorite like what um, the like space, cool oh my gosh, yes, the, mm -hmm. the tailgate, um, all the storage space, which you have the tonneau, mm -hmm. and then you, underneath the bench, you mm -hmm. have some more storage, mm -hmm. or we put like neck braces or um, blankets or things like that. Of course, the frunk is huge, and we have actually put, and I want to say 12 packs of ice for a party, all in the frunk. Fit. That's so cool. Not a problem. <laughs> Front gating. Yeah, front front, gating. there you go. That's what it was. Front, front gating. gating. That's yeah. hilarious. That was great. Cool. We have also the tent, but we haven't actually used it yet. Yeah. Yeah, that, that'll be fun hopefully this fall. Cool. Hi, folks. I'm Robert Rolnick. I'm the founder and CEO of Wind Everest. Oh, founder and CV CEO. Wow. Yep. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit uh, about your company. So Wind Everest is a software as a service company. Uh, we have three apps that are just about to be released. Uh, at least one of them is gonna be on the Apple uh, ecosystem. Uh, it's an app that informs people who drive electric cars when is the optimal time to charge their car so that they can revive idled wind turbines. I had no idea. That is amazing. So the wind turbines stay idle when they're not being needed. Is the, that right? This is true. The winds tend to peak at 2 o'clock in the morning. There's roughly 40% more wind energy available from West Texas at 2 in the morning than in the middle of the day. And as a result, because demand is so low, the demand is so low that you basically lose maybe 10 or 15% of the wind turbines and they have to just sit it out for a couple hours. So if everybody plugged in their, their uh, electric vehicles at 2 in the morning, we'd be able to use that. Now, is that that's obviously connected to the grid. Does it matter which uh, electric company you're going with? or It, it shouldn't matter. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, we call this coordinated clean charging. Mm -hmm. And basically, if the efforts of 100 people were able to be triggered from mm -hmm. using my app, mm -hmm. which gives a letter grade for each night, which is mm -hmm. the strongest night for wind and which is the weakest. Mm -hmm. But if 100 people were to charge on one of these strong wind nights, mm -hmm. you would actually actually revive one wind turbine and let's say I could be lucky enough to scale to a hundred thousand people I could get a thousand wind turbines to be reactivated on these strong wind nights. Wow all right that's amazing thank you so much for talking to yes, us. When, when, is the, they, when did you say the app was uh, going to be available? So I expect the app to be available later this month perhaps the first week of November. Okay, hi Nathan, thanks hi. for talking to us. You're welcome. So um, we were hoping to, that you would tell our viewers about how your experience owning the Mach-E compares to when you had a Tesla before. So um, I bought a Mach-E, or bought a Tesla Model Y in 2021, um, had it for three years, and then I just recently purchased the Mustang Mach-E about a month ago. 
And the Tesla is a great car. Um, my favorite thing about the Tesla is the navigation system. You can, I've driven to Florida very easily. I just, I didn't even research it, I didn't look it up. I just typed Florida in and typed my destination and it did all the calculation for me. Where I needed to stop, how long I had to charge, and even did it on the fly when I was going to a station in Mississippi. It was full, or very close to full, so it just rerouted me to a different one. They said, you'll go faster, you don't have to wait. So, that's great. The Model Y also pulls. I had a trailer, I had a little camper teardrop trailer. Uh, it maxes out at 3,500 pounds, which is what the max trailer was. Only bad thing is it cuts your range by two thirds, so you'll get about 100 miles <laughs> when I was pulling it. Uh, but you know, that's okay. I got to pull my trailer. Um, the Model Y also has a lot of storage. It has that boot below on your uh, trunk, which none of these other cars have. So that really can't be beat. But going to the Mustang Mach-E, um, it's such a better ride. The Y is very rough. And where I live, I have like railroad tracks and I don't have like the best roads. And so I feel everything. And when I rode in a friend's Ionic 5, I was like, so it's not just the roads, it's the car too. And so that was a big that was a big decider for me because it was so stiff, so rough. This car drives like a dream, still has the acceleration, it's still sporty. I'd probably say on the suspension, on the handling, it's probably sportier than the Y. Um, and I like driving it better. It's not as fast on the acceleration, but who really floors it every day? Nobody. So it's not a not a big deal for me, so I didn't have a problem with that. Um, when it comes to the Mach-E, the fit and finish was better. I expected after about 10 years for Tesla to like do better when it came to like fit and finish, but I had problems with like fabric screws coming out after three months. Uh, my little radio for the internet started glitching after nine months and I couldn't get it replaced without paying for it. Uh, so those were little things that kind of started to bother me and I ended up losing the high voltage battery as well. Um, they did replace it, but I was out of a car for two and a half weeks and I'm a single dad with a toddler, so that was quite difficult for me. Um, don't know how that is gonna relate to this, but just driving it and, and being with it for a while, um, the fit and finish is just a little better. So. You said something earlier about the, uh, when you said the fit, like uh, particularly the back seat, you said that you enjoy the back seat of the Mach-E better, is that right? I do. Um, the back seat is a little bit smaller than the Y, especially when you sit in the Y, you feel like you have a little bit more room, and you do, but the seats are more comfortable in the Mach-E. Okay. I will say though, I'm unfortunately, almost every Mach-E you find has black seating, so black seating in Texas gets hot. My my Model Y had that Y, that, that white leather and much cooler. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. All right. All righty, we're here with Derek and he is going to tell us about this electric powered excavator. I'm uh, Derek Edmonds with Romco Equipment. I'm the electric equipment product specialist for Romco. Uh, this is a fully electric uh, excavator, EC2, ECR25. Um, yeah, I don't know, what, what do you want me to talk well, about, were, I guess, yeah. You were telling us earlier about how you were trying to get into municipalities doing trenching and things like that. Right, right, so we're trying to target anybody we can, really, at this point. So, uh, municipalities, definitely the ones, you know, going around doing a utility work. Uh, it's perfect for that, you know, you're doing a few hours of job there load it back up on the trailer and take it back to the office, plug it in, ready to go for the next day. Yeah, I yeah. was thinking it would be great for homesteaders that are already off grid and, and have a large solar array anyway that need to do a lot of earthworks for, you know, swales and berms and things like that. But that's just the stuff I pay attention yeah, to. Yeah, that would be great for that as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, um, so you said that the company's been around for how long now? So Romco is, uh, I think, I believe it's 1961. Okay. Uh, but and the we electrics... Were, we are a Volvo dealer and uh, we've been... Uh, pushing the uh, electrics for about a year and a half now. Okay, yeah. awesome, cool. 
Anything else we should know about the company or about the equipment? Sorry. We have the excavators as well as the uh, wheel loaders. Uh, these are the compact sizes, but we also have a 23 ton excavator. So that'd be like the ones you see on the side of the road doing major work. Mm -hmm. And then we have a, a wheel loader coming out that's also a midsize uh, wheel loader. And then we have a DD25, which is a double drum roller for paving. So uh, we have that for uh, demo right, all of these for demo right now. So if anybody wants to come check it out, Give me a call. So this goes this way yep. and, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, don't, don't do this one. Don't mess with that one. Yeah. Okay. Right on your left hand. All right. How much, how much swing do I need here? Further back, further back. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, now hard left. Oh, 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 and it did go. <laughs> so Rachel, that is the event that we saw this year. Uh, what would you think? It was fun. I really liked it. Um, we had a, a we had a lot of fun going around interviewing people and talking uh, to various uh, representatives of different organizations. It's always nice to be at a place that's just for enthusiasts and it's not such a corporate event. Um, people are mostly there to just share information and get to know each other and not so much to necessarily sell something, which I really enjoyed. Um, it was different from last year. We had a little bit, you know, some different. Um, organizations represented, some same. Uh, and it's nice to see the same people year after year and sometimes they actually remember you, which is cool. One thing about this year is that it was hot. So glad that we have uh, our canopy with us and that it was we were able to fit it and that they have drinks here for people. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and maybe start packing up here in a few minutes. They've got one last raffle drawing uh, coming up and this thing's gonna be done soon. Uh, so, Thanks for watching, everybody. Go ahead and subscribe to get some more of our content. I have no idea what's coming up next at this point, but there'll be something. So we'll see you on the next one.